Hey yo, what is crack clack and it's your boy back at it again with another late night upload. I think I'll be late oh while well, I'm recording this late night. So yeah. So this is gonna be a little bit of a calculus. Um so this is gonna be the first part I think, because there's quite a few questions we need to get through. But let's start with this one. F prime of x. We wanna find f of x immediately. We're given the derivative, and we want to go back to the original function. This is our hint that we need to take an integral. Okay, we need to take an integral. So let's do that. Let's, let's see what, what that gives us. So let's take the integral of our derivative. Let's take an integral of our derivative. Uh, so that's going to be 3x squared minus 3 on dx. Now, if you remember your integration laws, x squared you raise it to a plus one power and then you divide it by that plus one power so two plus one is three over three minus three x plus c remember you can think of this as an x zero so you add one it becomes one over one which is just x so this is our new f of x and for simplicity's sake let's can cancel that out so that really just leaves us with x3 minus 3x plus c. Now, you might be asking, well, what is c, and how can we find that out? Well, notice they gave us this, which is very important. So let's plug uh, what we know in. So 1 is our function f of x. x is just 2 plus c. And if we do a little bit of simplification, um, we should get c. I'm gonna do this in as many steps as I can, just so I don't pull any sneakies on you. But we get c is equal to negative one. So we can say that f of x is equal to x cubed minus three x minus one. There we go. Okay, next question. f of x, blah, 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 blah. The line L is the tangent. Okay, let's, let's okay, so we need to find a line L. We have a tangent. And then we have this point where tangent is tangent to the graph, where the line is tangent to the graph. So now they want us to find the equation of L in form y equals mx plus c. Now, we need to know a couple things. First, we need to know the slope. So let's start with the slope. Well, if we have some function f of x, let's call it this, and that's not a very, it's not at all accurate. In fact, I can do something more like this. If we look at the point zero one, you'll have um, a tangent. So let's call this zero one. We want to find the slope here. Well, if we know f of x is this, then we can actually calculate the slope. So first, find the derivative, which is this, this due to um, expo uh, due to the uh, derivative laws of the, uh, of the e. Right, the e doesn't change, but by chain rule you multiply by the derivative. So this doesn't change, right? This stays the same, but by chain rule, you're gonna take the derivative of this, and that's just three. So three e to the three x. Now that we know what f, um, f prime of x is, we need to evaluate at x equals zero, because that's where our tangent occurs in terms of x. So three times zero. This just gives us 3e to the 0, anything to the 0 is just 1, which means our slope at the tangent is 3. So that's convenient. We have our slope and we have a point. And this is really all we need because we're going to use this formula of a slope. Where y1 and x1 are just points, uh, it's just a, a coordinate we know, which is 0 and 1, and m is the slope we calculated to be 3. So let's do that. y minus y1, well, y1 is just 1, then m is 3, x minus 0, but we don't need to write that. 0 is exactly that. Then y is equal to 3x. One, and there you go, that's the equation of the tangent. So let's move on to question three. Write down the car's velocity. Okay, so let's read this out first. A particle travels with velocity v in meters per second for nine seconds. Uh, we can see that, nine seconds. This is shown in the graph below. Now, first of all, let's notice what the this is a velocity time graph. I'll be very important in the later part of this question. We have a velocity time graph. 
So let's do this. Write down the car's velocity at t equals 4. This is the velocity of time graph, so at t equals 4, we just do a little dot, 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 dot here. We get that velocity is equal to 6 meters per second. So if you want to be really proper about this, that we say that v as a function of t, which in this case is 4 seconds, is equal to um, 6. If the i is really picky, they'll want me to put units in. I don't really know, so I'll bracket it. B, the car's acceleration at t equals 2. Now let's think a little bit. This is a velocity time graph. How do we derive acceleration from velocity? Well, velocity, really, or sorry, acceleration rather, is just the derivative of velocity. So the real question is, well, what is the derivative? Right? If you look here, what is the derivative of the v v of 2. What's what's this equal to? Well, let's actually first fundamentally call well, well, what is a derivative? The derivative really is just a slope. It's the rate of change. So in other words, if we know the rate of change at 2, then we can answer this question, the more fundamental question being um, a of 2 is equal to v prime of 2, it, oops, v prime of 2, which is just equal to the slope of the, of the v of t graph at t equals 2. What is that? Well, if we do a little, we ask ourselves one question. Well, we learned this before. How do you calculate a slope of this line? Right? How do we, how do we calculate that? Well, this is just a triangle. Remember, rise over run is your best friend. This is going to help us calculate the slope. So this, this point right here is um, 3, 6. This point right here is 0, 0. So if we do, um, oh, starting with our y's, the difference of the y's at the top, 6 minus 0, and then we have 3 minus 0, and we get 2. So our answer here is 2. Now, remember, it's acceleration, so meters per second squared, or rather, meters per second, or meters m times s to the negative 2, because IV loves negative exponents. Now, find the total distance traveled. All right, now this requires asking yourselves, how do you relate velocity to distance? Well, remember, distance is just, distance as a product, of, uh, as a function of time, is really just velocity. Or oh, sorry, it's really just the integral of velocity. Now, this is a bit complicated because we don't really have anything to integrate, but we can ask ourselves what this integral really means. Remember that integration is really just finding the area under a graph. So we can really do this. This is very doable. So what are we trying to find? Well, we want to find the total distance traveled from here to here. So we just need to find the area of this entire thing. And this is very easy to do. So let's break it down into figures we know how to calculate the area for. This. Two triangles and one thin rectangle. So let's do the triangle here first. So area one is equal to one half base times height. So the base is three, the height is six, and that's just one half. It's just gonna be nine. A two. Is this a rectangle base times height or length times width, whatever you want to go? This is two. Um, sorry. This is two. And then the length is um, also six. That's just going to be 12. And then A3 is another triangle. So one half base is from five to nine. So that's four. The difference is four. And then the height is six. So this goes to two and we get 12. So really all we have to do is add this all up. 12 plus 12 is 24, plus 9 is um, 35. So the answer is distance, so in meters, 35 meters. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go on to the next one. Next one is just um, a pretty um, simple integration principle question. Nothing too hard, just trying to test to make sure you know the properties of integrals. So if we start with the first one, we can actually move this little little guy out here to get 2f of x dx. Now we know this is this 6, so we can do a quick uh, substitution to get 12. There we go, b. 
Now this one's a bit more, um, I think, um, a bit more profound. Um, so I'm just trying to think. You could, uh, something you can do here, I think, is, um, you can do a little 1 to 5 f of x, and then you can separate it. You can actually do um, 1 to 5 plus it. Now, something I think, ooh, I don't know why I cut out there. Anyways, continuing from what I said, you can separate this into a separate integral. So this is with respect to x, and if we separate it, we do really just do the same thing. Now, we know what this is. We know this is just 6 from the question. And we don't know what this is, but if we integrate, we get 3x again, because there's an x to the 0. You add 1, get 1 over 1, which is just, again, um, x itself. And then all you really do here is we go from 5 to 1, and then we add. So 6 plus, we uh, evaluate our upper bound and our lower bound. So 3, you plug in the 5 to there, and so you get 15. Um, minus 3, so 6 plus 12, and you get 18. So I hope that one made a bit more sense. Um, and if it didn't, please feel free to leave a comment down below, but we're going to move on to the next one. It's going to be our last question for the video, um, so stay tuned for this one. So, um, f prime of x, this is just really the derivative, and this, is, this should be relatively easy for you to do. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to write it out in terms of solely exponents. So, notice, negative 1, because it's a fraction. Now, it's very easy for us to integrate by, inter uh, sorry, not integrate, ugh, derive. So, by derivation rules, all you have to really do here is, um, well, exactly as it sounds, um, now, what this is itself is um, a negative. So you're going to bring this to the front. So P, X, and then you subtract one so to the negative 2. Um, if you want to simplify it a little bit, you can do 3X squared uh, plus P to the X squared. If you want to do that, I think this will this one works too. And I'll leave it like that just in case the IB is picky about negative exponents and whatnot. But now we have a minimum value of f of x when x is equal to 1. Find the value of p. Now this is uh, not too difficult, but you just need to make sure you know what it means when it's asking you for a minimum. When it's asking you for a minimum or maximum, that really just means you're setting your first derivative to 0. And because we've calculated our first derivative here, it's not too, too hard to do. This is just 3x squared. Uh, plus p over x squared equals 0. But they give us a little bit of information. They say x is equal to 1. So let's plug in 1. And then this just becomes 3. p equals 0. p equals negative 3. Ta-da! So if you have any other questions, feel free to comment them down below. Uh, I'll be making my next part of this video um, very soon. So yeah, thank you for watching.